So we can download this now. And start installation. Um, use a switch if you install a GSS API library. Okay, so that's what MIT Kerberos is all about. So we don't need to put that in. So we can just put all these commands in to build it. And install it. There's no test suite. Just command here. done. So that's chapter 17 networking libraries. Mark that off. And now on subversion. So we've done surf. We're not doing Apache. We've got boost and Sara Sazzle. I'm not sure about that one. Okay, we've got that. I think that was going to be rebuilt actually. Dbus, we've got libsecret. We've got lib glib object introspection. Got that. Libgcrypt, we've got. And Valor, we haven't got. Graph is. I'm going to install, but that will be for. Oh, did that there somehow? Uh, that will be reinstalled to get all the options in, which is quite a few. As it says, graph is basic usage does not need any libraries out of what is found in the LFS book. Its core rendering engine allows to generate several graphic formats such as these. These formats can be converted to almost any other using, for example, tools from Image Magic. The dependencies below add the ability to generate graph images in bitmap format to display the graph image on screen, to edit a graph by seeing directly the result image, or to view large graphs. Since Graph is a dependency of several other packages in this book, it's suggested to first build it without the dependencies, then to rebuild it when you have enough packages to suit your needs. Which is exactly what I'm going to do, and what I'm doing with a lot of these packages as well. Quite a useful tool this is. So you can see how many options there are, there's many options. So I can scroll all the way down here and let's see what options we've got here. Disable PHP. This is needed as Ghost Script is not installed, so we need to add that in. With Java and Crude Dir, so we can put that in because we've got open or well, we've got a Java. Um I'll just check that the Java home is in uh exists. It should do because I've rebooted since we unset it for one of the packages, I can't remember which, I think it might be Nent actually. With WebP, even if it's installed, it's not included in the build without this option, so we haven't got LibWebP yet. With Smurder, even if the dependence is not installed, right, okay, so we don't need to worry about that. So we do need to add in two options here, so I'm going to run these two first.
okay so now let's run this configure and we're going to add in um, right it's already got this one here PS to PDF it was true this is needed if Ghost Group is not installed which isn't okay so we just need to add in this one then Okay, so you can see there's a lot of stuff missing there, which um, hopefully the next time we build this, we can activate these to make graphes uh, much more functional. So let's build this. It's going to take a few minutes to build.
Right, so this graph is finished. There's no test suite at all. So I'll we'll install it. And there's a sim link here to add in for documentation as the root and configuration. There's a config file there, and it says about additional plugins and tools available on the website. So that's graph is going to reload that after options or rebuild it. Chapter 11, shut that down for now. Valor. We've got Dbus of sorts and Libx SLT. So we can download this now. Tidy up the previous package. So we've got graph is installed so we can ignore that. Just um what's this uh graph generating right okay yeah we can just run these two
Right, well that's built, so now let's run the tests.
Right, so that's finished testing and we've got good result there, all passed. So let's install Vala now. And that's done. So I'll cross that off in chapter 13. Fella and shut down the tab and tidy up. So, right, I just did a listing just to see if there's any other directories that I've um, left lying around. So, it looks like I've got Xterm. I'm going to tidy that up. I can't imagine why I left that. Also, QT Everywhere. I think I left that when I was checking um, I think it was for the files that were missing. Um, but it certainly doesn't need to be kept around. We're going to extract it and rebuild it anyway. And what else is there? And legacy, I think they're to do is X, they were. Yeah, that X. Oh, they're fonts. Okay. Font Falcon. Um, yeah, I can get rid of that as well. Because that's going to be rebuilt. Boost. Get rid of that. And app, I think that's part of X installation as well. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's just a little quick tidy up there. So let's carry on now with libsecret. So we've got a jib glib. We've done god all oh right with yeah, we're up to Valor. Let's have a quick look at GTK doc. See how much that needs. Uh, that might be possible to do. We've got a lot of what's required there. Um, FOP's not something I'm going to install too soon. It's got quite a few dependencies. Um, oh, no, actually, I thought it had more than that. So that would be possible to install as well. Okay, so this looks like it's quite promising. So let me get this one open properly. Dot book XML, let's check all these. XML we've got. XSL we've got. ITS tool, don't think we've got that one. ITS. No, so let's concentrate on that one next. But XML is that the one we just checked, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, this one we can do, and this looks like it's a oh no, I thought it was a Python module, it's not, or it's not listed as such in the book. It looks like it is a Python tool, or at least the preparation is. Um, oh no, it's just specifying what Python is by the looks of it, so okay. ITS tool, yeah, standard configure and make type program, so 
It just looks a bit confusing there with Python being mentioned. So ITS tool. So we copy and paste. So that is built. Install it. And that's done. So that's in chapter 49. ITS tool, mark that one off. Back to GTK doc, libx SLT, I'm sure I've got that. Yep, so pigment is required at runtime. Let's see if we can install that now. Yeah, so this is a module. did look at this earlier on, I can't see it there anywhere else, okay. So save the link. And there's just one command to build and install this as the root. So I'll make a note of that module has been installed. And shut the tab down. Go back to GTK doc and we've got FOP we can install just to get PDF documentation. Might be nice to read or a bit more portable. So let's save these links. So that's FOP. Required additional downloads. recommended packages. Okay, that's in SourceForge. So that's downloaded. Back to FOP. So we've got Apache Ant got the X window the system to run the test so we can run this so it says actually here to ensure Java home is set well I've already done that already but let, let's be sure rather than guess or assume things so that's okay so let's extract FOP first So copy the XML hyphenation patterns into the FOP source tree by running the following commands. Install a temporary Maven library. Installing FOP components. Java doc that ships with OpenJDK 10 and 8 has become much stricter than previous versions regarding performance of the java.comments in source code to HTML. The FOP documentation does not meet these standards, so performance checks have to be disabled. This can be done with the following. Fix building with JDK 16 due to an outdated Apache Maven plugin. Okay. 
the build XML file calls for an old version of PDF box components that are no longer available. Copy the update, updated PDF box components into the source tree. Compile FOP by running the following commands. Let's see if there's any other options. Didn't look like it. So let's run all of these. This takes. Okay, so it'll be a few minutes.
Okay, that's finished building. There's no tests, so I'm going to come to the route to install the package. And one last thing to tidy up, what I presume is quite a big package that's unneeded. So tidy that up. Oh, in the subdirectory. Uh, some information about configuring. Um, So create a like um, a configuration configuration file. Um, it says the number representing amount of RAM installed in your computer. Example would be um, number of megabytes. So I'll copy this in and then edit it. Um, So you might not want to make it as big as that because um, if the VM did swallow that much it could cause a problem so um, I think I might do half of what's in here so it's got an 8 gig and 8 gigabytes of RAM in the machine so I'm going to stick in 4096 which is way above what the example is so it should be sufficient. To include the FOP script in your path, update system wide profile. Okay. So become root again. I guess at the moment FOP doesn't work. A source profile. And now type FOP. Yeah, it's it's found it. So that's what that last little script has done. Uh, running FOP can be somewhat verbose. The default logging level can be changed from info to any one of these. Um, you can edit login properties in the Java home. Uh, which is kind of, you'd have to be careful with that in case that's used by another package if that's part of the Java system library. Um, if you adjusted that, you'd be adjusting any other tools that emitted uh, logging commands. So um, that would be something to bear in mind. But anyway, FOPS complete. I'll cross that off. Chapter 50. Close that down, back to GTK doc, and I think that's the last of what we need to be installed for um, GTK doc. Note the optional Python modules above can easily be installed with the pip3 command. Well, I don't know virtually anything about Python, so... Um, I guess it's some sort of installation thing. Um, actually, looking at this, lip, uh, LXML is one that's in the book, so I can install that and then maybe see if we can use that pip3 command to install the other two packages that are outside of the book. See how easy it is. So we've got these all installed, so let's download the package. Extract it. And install it. So it looks like we can install both of them here for Python 2 and 3.
Okay, let's finish building both of them, so I'm going to run a test now. So first we'll test the Python 2 version.
Okay, so um, looks like we've got an error here for some reason. 29 failures and 8 errors. Now it did rebuild the package in place and did say it was an in place error, so I'm not sure why that is. Um, and it is using Python 2. Well, I must admit I'm not too concerned about Python 2. I'll run the Python 3 one and see how that fares.
Right, so the version 3 seems to have failed in the same way. I'm not sure what that is. Um, oh, I wonder if it's because Valgrin's not installed. It's trying to run tests that that would run, maybe. Yeah, to run more tests. Yeah, it could, could well be that. And maybe the fact that I've got GDB, which is only partially built, if you like. Um, maybe that's confusing it. So... I'm going to go ahead and install. Anyway, I'm happy with what I've got. Install both versions. And come out and tidy up. Seems that all these Python modules just write as root when you install them to the directory so I'll just do a straightforward sudo rmrf on the directory so that's lxml start again lxml installed <coughs> so now I shall close that down Go back to GTK doc. Um, I was going to, I was thinking about installing these with this pip3 command, but I thought, no, I'm going to keep this purely source built, uh, which it won't be if I installed these two. Um, so I'm not going to install them. Uh, but what effect that'll have on anything else, I don't know, but um, I'm just going to go with this. So we've got everything installed here now. All the dependencies. So I'm going to save this. And extract it. And build it. So there's no other information apart from the build instructions. Okay, that's built. There's no test suite to run because it says it already hang. It will hang. So we are oh, right. Okay, so we have to install it first and then run the tests. Uh, we can just do make install there. It says some tests will fail depending on the optionally installed packages. So let's see how we go. Okay, yeah, there were some failures there, so um, I guess that's because of the packages that haven't been installed. There's three there, although now that was probably doesn't count because it says that's for PDL, so it's these two probably the ones that are causing those failures. So there's not a lot to do about that apart from installing them, which I, I don't want to do. So GTK doc. Tidy that up and mark that one off as complete. Chapter 11. Now we go to Lib Secrets. So we've got these two, we've got that one. 
Vagrant have got D-Bus Python required for the test suite. So let's look at this. So again we're in the Python module section. Pyrog object. So these two both require some tests, but I'm not going to install that one. So I'll install this one, so it probably means we'll get failures, but at least we can test mostly what's there. So required object introspection, we've got PY Cairo. We've got Cairo installed, I think. Well, yep, I think it's a rebuild. So we can install this Python module. So no longer builds a Python 2 module. If you need that module for packages such as GIMP and Py GIMP to use PY Cairo. Let's have a quick look at what GIMP 2 says. Right, so it's needed there to build translated help files. Um, I think that's probably something you probably want help files, especially with a big package like GIMP, would probably be useful. So I'm going to also load up this older version and I'll install that in a moment. So let's do this one first. So Python setup py build. On the route to install it. Oh, it's a patching package XCBSHM. We've not found. So this may be because Cairo is only partially built um, in terms of its dependencies. Yeah, I can't find that. Um, let's have another look at this. built it with that switch there possibly because uh, it does mention XCB and maybe I haven't enabled it because of this experimental thing here go to the, I'm not sure, what I want to do is to see if I can find that file mentioned anywhere in the manual. I can't remember if it lists all the files or just certain important ones. So I'm going to go back to the manual in one page and look for this PC file that's missing. Uh, 
about this one here. So I've got to wait for the page to load, if you remember it's a huge page. Control F. Since we're taking, yes, yeah, very slow. I think probably what's happening is the browser is still rendering this page, even though it's loaded the data. It's probably still rendering it or trying to cope with it in memory. So I'm going to paste this file name in and see if it's mentioned anywhere. So you'll have to excuse this, how slow it is. No, it's not mentioned there. Um, I guess what I can try and do is to um, reinstall Cairo and add this switch in. Um... Yeah, I think I'll try that. So let's open Cairo in our usual window. Um, actually, what I might try to do is install the version 2 first of all. See if that um, has the same problem. So let's download this version. So this is one dot eighteen. So build it. So I'm going to run these commands in separately to see which one's actually failing. So it's that first one by the looks of it, it's saying it's failed the same for the older version of PY Cairo. So let's tidy that up. Let's go back to Cairo, I'll shift that down here. the XORG libraries, I can open that up just to change the colour of the link. So let's configure this and add in this switch here. And enable GL because we've, we've got that. Um, it's required for Wayland, so we'll, I will be installing some of the Wayland libraries, um, even though it says it's experimental. And we've now got GTK docs, so I can add this in as well.
So let's have a look at. So there's still something missing here, as you might expect. Let's see if there's anything mentioned. XCB, yeah, it's got XCB. So there's X11 XCB, XCB SHM functions, yes. So it looks like this has found it. So it will be compiled with these following functions. So it could be that that's what was missing. This switch here. Uh, it does say they're under active development. Oh yeah, previous. That's more or less what the manual's saying. It's also the same for the T service as well. Uh, but it's required for the Mozilla app applications like Firefox. So we'll be installed in that. Okay, so let's see how we get on rebuilding this. Okay, so that's built. Let's install it again. I'm going to run that. Where is... Oh, I did it as root, did I? Let's tidy up first. Right, so it's still not installed, so it didn't come from this place. Um, so I'm not sure why that is actually missing, or indeed why Python thinks it should have it. So it could be that something else needs to be rebuilt. Um, 
looking at the X windows, uh, packages, things that I've got to be rebuilt. There's one with Xorg libraries when FOP's been installed, so it is installed now, but that would only be for documentation. Um, I guess I could reinstall that for completeness. I've got another one, Xorg Proto, to reinstall after Java's been installed. We know that Mesa has got to be installed. I can't imagine if that would be the problem. Um, and Xorg server needs to be reinstalled after the options. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what is missing. Uh, I guess I could do a quick search on the internet so we can find anything useful here. So xcbshm.pc see what this turns up ok so I think that's a web address let's put it in there xcbshm.pc so it's part of libxcb by the looks of it so which we've already installed in Let's put this in quotes so if that narrows it down a bit more. Okay, so it does look like libxcb, so I guess I could reinstall that package, even though it's installed successfully. So I'll go right to the top here. Oh, I don't think I've got... Oh, they're, they're pinned, aren't they? That's right. Look for libxcb. Um... Yeah, let's try installing this Well, there's that in file that was found on the internet, so I guess that's some sort of file that creates the final file, like a source file. So I'm going to copy all of this.
now there's a chance that strange things might happen with the X windowing system because we're rebuilding, reinstalling libraries. So um, I think at some point very soon I'm going to quit the X windowing system. In fact, I might just do a reboot as well. Um, just refresh everything. But for now, let's see if we can find that file again. So it's there now, it's been created. So let's run the test again. Okay. Sudo make install. Okay, let's now let's do where is on that. Okay, maybe the um, let's do an update. The database needs to be update DB needs to be refreshed. I should run this as a root actually, shouldn't I? Yeah. So it may have already been on the system anyway, actually. No, it hasn't found it. Okay. So let's do a find again. Okay, so it's in opt x all clear package config. So it is actually there. Um, I've done the install actually, haven't I? So it's pointless really, I suppose, looking at the date and time of that. I suppose what I should have done is actually looked specifically for it. It's handy to, to use where it is, but when the database is out of date or if it's not scanning this directory more to the point, um, that's when it fails. So yeah, that's got the current date and time. Um, okay, so that was probably unnecessary in the end. It may have already existed. So I'm going to go back and try and reinstall these two packages. So I'll tidy up. That one that might have been a bit pointless doing that, but uh, it won't have done any harm, that's for sure. So we're doing version 1.18. This is the Python 2 version. Uh, sorry, Python. Py Cairo 1.18. 1.18. So I'll rerun these commands. I'll rerun this command here. So it's still failing. Let's be a bit desperate and do another config. No. So let's echo this package config path. So Xorg. Let's just find search for it again. So it should be opt xorg lib package config config opt xorg lib. So the search path is correct. So for some reason it's not finding it. Oh. All right, the last time I didn't have the right permissions, but the first time I did. Package EGL is not found. 
Oh, okay, so now it's complaining about another. Right, so that's definitely there as well. So it seems like for some reason it can't access this directory opt xorg lib package config opt xorg lib package config egl.pc. Um, I wonder actually come to think of it when I'm going into sudo it hasn't got the correct path set up there I bet that's what's happening package no it's not set up at all I bet that's what's happening Dollar package. Yeah, so if I do sudo, okay, it is working there. But it's not as sudo SEO. Um, okay, let's do source etc profile. Okay, dollar package. Right now it's there. Okay. Let's now try sudo minus e and this command, not that one. I'll have to copy this again. Right, so that's the problem. That that environment variable is not there um, as the root user. So it probably does mean I need to restart this session um, to get the profile set up, I think. Um, they've obviously been changed. And I think, that, as I remember, the way that TWM works, it works on the initial environment. So, for example, if I was to... Get another X term up here and do echo dollar package. Oh, well, that one's the same. Um, well, how about FOP? If I try to run FOP, you see it's not auto completing, it's not finding it because the profile's been updated with the FOP path. So I need to do source etc profile to enable that to work. There it is there now, you see it's finding it. So I think that could be part of the problem. It might not be the complete problem. <clears throat> and it might be that I do need to pass the minus capital E into sudo to pass in the current environment into sudo to enable this to work. But at least I found the problem now. So um, what I should do is I'll do sudo minus capital E SU just check that package exists here yeah, and I'll run in the rest of these commands here to finish the installation so that looks like that's done so that's the version 2 built I'll install Oh, I'll make a note of this. So this is version 1.18.2. So py Cairo 1.18.2. Now I'm going to do the version for Python 3, which is 1.20.1.
and run these commands in. Okay, so sudo minus e. So, as a reminder, if I do sudo su echo dollar package, the um, completion bash completion is not working. So, if I do control d, sudo minus capital E su, that passes the environment into the new uh, user that we've gone into. And now, if I do echo dollar package the autocomplete works and you can see that the path is there now so these commands should work as they did before and yes looks like they're actually doing more than the version 2 did <clears throat> so that's py chiro-1.20.1 I think it was on it yep yeah. So I'll come out of that, tidy up py Cairo 1.20.1. <clears throat> um, I'm slightly concerned that behaved differently. Let's see how far back I can scroll. So the Python 2 setup, let's get it again. Is it just below here, wasn't it? So Python 2 setup, py install, optimizes equals one, that ran. <clears throat> oh yes, that's just about a page full. Then there's a few more lines. It doesn't seem to be as much output um, on the Python 2 version. So it's setup, py install, py Cairo header. And stop you install package config. It set up the header and then it did the package config. Yeah, so it did install correctly. Um, I was just worried that the Python 3 version looked like it was it installed or output a lot more, which it did indeed. And that's why I was concerned that the um, um, older version didn't install correctly, but it looks like it has done. So I'll shut that down now. Then we go on to PY object. So we've got all the required dependency for that. Let's now install it. And let's build it. So the faulty test is going to remove first of all. And then it looks like Ninja is required to build this one. No other options to pass to it. That's built, so let's run ninja test to test it. Might get this error that normally get at the end, yeah. Um, all right, now we've got a failure. No module name py test. Okay, so there's no we can't run the test because um, that's an um, outside module, so we'll just do sudo ninja install and that's done so this is a PYG object I 
shut that one down and we've got another module to build Dbus Python I'm hoping this will build alright, even though the bus has got to be reinstalled. So I'll we'll just run this, there's no other options mentioned. So this is the Python 2 module we're building at the moment. So run the test now. It says it will report problems due to debus issues. So uh, looks like we didn't seem to get that. So that's okay. Now let's build the Python 3 version. and check that okay so now we've installed the version 2 and the same with version 3 that's done. So I'll mark that off as complete. Dbus Python. Shut that down. Go to libsecret and tidy up. Right now, um, actually, before I carry on with the secret um GTK doc no key ring is that already installed just don't want to lose no we haven't done that one that's a run time man. right let's have a look at this one I have got it in the list already actually, no keyring. Alright, so there's this one that needs rust. I bet. Or something like that. Dbus GCR. Alright, I think this can probably be installed. Um, I'll remove it from here. Go back to lip secret. Bring it back up here. So D plus GCR. Oh GCR I think we need. Yeah. Um Right, I have to remember to come back to this. What I was thinking about doing next was to reinstall the two XOR packages that I can reinstall. Um, the first one was XOR Proto. In fact, I'll go through all of these. Uh, 
because I've visited them all already. So I'll get this open in a new tab and just keep going through them. So it's Util Macros XOR Proto. Oh yes, this is to build additional documentation. So I'll look at uh, there's a reciprocal dependency of FOP between if you want to build the documentation. Right, okay, so that's what I'm doing, I'm doing now. So let's have a look at XMLTO. That looks like all the requirements we've got. We've got links. I'll open that up because we've installed that. So, yeah, I can install this one. Okay, so we don't need to worry about the fact that links is pointed to links. It says it's to stop confusion with e-links. So we can just copy and paste that, build this package. So that has built. Uh, let's make check on some tests. That's all good. So sudo make install and that's done so I'll cross that off chapter 49 XMLTO close that down go back to XOR Proto and build ASCII doc next to get this documentation so again we've got all the requirements apart from the N2 which are outside of the book Save link. So I first got a set to build. And just copy and paste these commands. Looks like that sound that was quite quick. So sudo su make install make docs and that's done. So shut that down, go back to XOR Proto. So we've got all the dependencies now. So let's extract it. Install XCI doesn't need to buy old programs. Okay. So we'll just take that as it is. Okay, it says no work to do. I think this package was seemed to be fairly simple in what it did. So let's oops. Install it again. Okay, so I haven't got the error that I normally get this time, but it's installed okay. So I'm now going to cross off Xorg Pro Proto. This is after Java installed. Why is that? Oh, sorry, I'm looking. Uh, it's all proto. I think I've written down the wrong note there, or against the wrong. There doesn't seem to be anything Javery about this. Um, certainly, FOP was one of the dependencies which I've now got. 
I wonder if I've put that... I'll cross it off anyway. I wonder if the Java bit was supposed to be after the XORG library, which is the next bit I'm going to build, or rebuild rather. But we'll check that. Uh, back again. Tidy that up. So lib xau xdmcp proto lib xcp xorg libraries. I wonder why I've written Java there. Um, let me go back and just check the dependencies of these other packages. How strange. I wonder why that is. I've put that, I think I've probably put it against the wrong. Um, package. Not sorry. Um, I will rebuild these because FOP's one of the requirements and we've got all the other ones that required at ASCII doc XML TO. So to download them, we don't need to download them anymore, but what we'll do is seed into the lib directory where they are. Recreate this function in the environment. Start a new shell. And reinstall them with this script here. And I will again test them all. So I'll do that by removing this hash and complete that. And wait for these to rebuild.
so that's all been rebuilt and tested okay um, it produces the logs I'm not going to bother checking them because it would have exited had it not been okay so I'll just type exit to come out of this shell with the setting to quit as soon as an error um, I can't imagine I'd need to do these should exist yeah yeah they both exist so that's okay we'll move on just quickly check there's two more packages I've got to reinstall I'm just going to check to see if I can actually spot what package this is that I've written down that needed Java I wondered if it was an ant package um, So Mesa, that's got to be reinstalled. I don't think it can be that one. Libraries. keyboard config so xorg server is one I want to reinstall yeah that's got still a few um, packages to install guess I could have a quick look so that's there So Libipox has been done. Let's open that one up. Polk it. That's one that needs installing. So that's why that needs installing. It's got GDIB and JS78 requirements. Don't think we've installed that JS yet, have we? Uh, no, that's to do. So, okay, Let's skip that for the moment. Drivers TWM, yeah, the rest are installed. So I'll just go to the end just to get these links updated. And we're on to XORG libraries, right? So that's that. So we were on libsecret. I might review what to do next actually. Um, but I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come out of this and reset the machine um, just to make sure everything's loaded correctly. Uh, I'm not sure how to close down this download management. I'm not sure if Control Q does it. No, it doesn't. There's no download manager there. Let's have a look under here. No, okay. So I'll just do a control Q on the browser. Let's shut it all down, okay. And I'll do control D here to leave the shell. I'll 
do a control D there and control up to date. And when the machine's rebooted, start again. <laughs> 